to Escape This Podcast, a show that's a mix between tabletop role-playing and escape room puzzles. This is the final part of our weird alien adventure, yeah, which is it's... not canonically called E.T. The Escaping Terror Escape Trill. That was only episode one. I managed to get away from that I in episodes two and three. I believe you ruined that. Behind my back, you didn't tell me that you were changing the names of them. No, you didn't even know. I really didn't. I'm very upset. I don't even know what this part's called. <laughs> Well, I have names for each of the individual episodes, but apparently they don't make it out there. Nobody even sees those because no. you just change everything. That I have full creative control. Oh. Anyway, yes, this was a small arc. We've already had our twist. We're already ready to do the finale, kick some alien ass. Yeah, it's, it's part four. And for the first time in a very long time, we have yeah. some in-studio guests who are not over the internet, which is weird. I'm not looking at them because I don't, pl- I don't train myself here. to look at them. I'm picturing a webcam above their heads and I can see that. But we have with us Leanne and Aaron from Next Level Escape. Welcome. Hello. Hey, guys. Thanks for having us. We could say very quickly, Next Level Escape, one of the absolute top escape room experiences in Sydney. Like, Thank you. I mean, this isn't just, oh, no, meaningless compliments. I mean... It's because we're here knows. in person, right? You, you like, get nominated for all the awards. You, you, you've got this thing. At least you know our what awards. You're doing. Yeah. Do you want to give a rundown for... Look, we have some people in Sydney who'll be able to come and join the games, but you've also got some online experiences and things that other people can do? Yeah, we do. We have two online games. One is based on a real physical escape room. Uh, it's called Temporal Tangle. It's using photospheres, so you can explore that as though you were really there. Mm. And the other one is... The Disappearance on Station Eleven, which is a <laughs> sci-fi one, fully um, rendered, all of that, not an actual thing, because we do not, alas, have a full space station to take pictures in. But we think it looks pretty schmick, and it's a lot of fun. Everyone on the space station has disappeared, and you got to work out why and what happened. Nice. Well, great fun. Lovely. Uh, yeah, look, and, and the physical games are fantastic as well. I think it was not the first escape room I played in Sydney, but I think maybe the second that I played was Ex Libris, which was fantastic and very good. And we've actually done some voice acting for games that you have done. Mm. So there's some games that, not the online ones, but the physical games in Sydney, you can go and you can hear our voices. They sound amazing, by the way. So when we have guests on the show, we always ask the same two questions. The first is, this is an escape room podcast. What is your escape room experience? I'm sure there's going to be a lot of overlap, but Leanne, why don't you start? So I played my first escape room at least eight or nine years ago. So my sister took me to this random one in Brisbane. In hindsight, it wasn't very good. Well, it was (laughs) 10 years ago. Exactly. But you know what? I had a lot of fun, even though I didn't know what was happening half the time. But my sister's (laughs) like, you know what? You love puzzles and stuff. You're going to love this. And then started reviewing escape rooms with a friend many years later. We were on a trip. We had a stopover in Helsinki, I think it was. Mm. And we're like, let's go play escape rooms for the hell of it while we're here. (laughs) And while we're at it, why don't we just start writing reviews for them? Because why the hell Why not? not? Yeah. And then from there went on to the next level and everything just kind of went from there. You became business people. (laughs) (laughs) We are a real business. (laughs) Wonderful. And Aaron... What was your kind of pre-next level escape room experience? Well, I I uh, was working at the Reserve Bank for a bit and like a group of uh, friends there were just were, like thinking about doing an escape room and they were out a spare ticket and they're like, yeah, come along. And I was like, uh, all right, sure. Why not? Went and did it. Wasn't entirely impressed. <laughs> Fair. And I was like, oh, I think I can do a bit better than this. Then I thought of mulled over that for like six months, had a midlife crisis, quit my job. And then I was like, it's time. <laughs> and long story short, I came to Sydney, did it, well, came back to Sydney, did another seven rooms in one weekend. I was like, yeah, I can do this. And then <laughs> off, that's all she wrote, really. And I've done like a hundred rooms since. So yeah, and built several. So then the other side of this show is it is escape rooms mixed with a sort of tabletop role playing style. Uh, what is your tabletop role playing experience? Why don't we go the other way around? Aaron, do you have any? Oh, um, eh, quite minimal. I haven't played yeah. very many. I understand the concept. I. <laughs> I've sort of observed a few, but not actually played one. Yeah, that's fair. That's fair. So this is new to me. This will be fun. Yeah. When it comes to a lot of the stuff that makes tabletop role playing, like rolling dice and getting a character together and do it, none yeah, of that you have yes to worry ended. about. We just get to get straight into the the feeling of just exploring a mind palace of puzzles. Woo-hoo. We don't have to worry about all the numbers and the dice and the things. Get right awesome. into it. Yeah, I, I don't do improv, so if you have an idea and it's not written down on my paper, <laughs> I'm just going to say no. Yeah, it just doesn't exist anymore. <laughs> oh, okay. That's sure. Uh, and Leanne? 
Um, I've played some D and D, so I did a bit of a campaign for a while. So hard to be committed to anything when you're running a business. Yes. But, um, and then I did one that was called, I think it was like City of Mist. Okay. So that one's a lot more narrative heavy, less mm. about the roles, more about, you know, what are you doing next and how that develops your character. Yeah. It's a lot of fun. Um, all right, Danny, are you ready to whisk us away? Yeah, let's do this. Let's finish of... this alien story. You didn't let me describe the world. Into oh, a world oh. of whimsy and adventure is what I was going to say. Yeah, I'm bored of that. Yeah, okay. Okay, let's get into it then. So it seems like your species was not the only one observing and travelling to Earth. And these guys don't seem to have as hands-off a policy as your university does. In fact, if you needed an English word to describe what's happening before you, you would very much go with invasion. It's, It's quite something. As soon as humans saw these ships descend, they raced around, they got out of their houses even though it's the middle of the night, they armed themselves. But when they got within a certain range of what you would call the mothership, the humans just collapsed. They went completely unconscious. In fact, when you get within about 100 feet of the ship, you feel fuzzy in the head. You wonder if they have something aboard that shuts down part of the brain, a part that humans clearly rely on a lot, but you not so much. You look at your recently recovered flight pod. In theory, you could fix it, leave this planet right now. But you might be the only being on Earth capable of stopping this invasion. And you like humans. Especially Matt, who's been a pretty solid friend while you've been stranded here. In fact, where is... Uh Uh-oh. This big ship near you has aliens all around it, and they are dragging unconscious humans up a ramp and on board, taking prisoners And you can very much see Matt amongst them. Yeah, alright, there's no question, you can't let this happen. But how can lonely little you take on a whole invasive species? You don't know anything about them. Except, well, hang on. You might know one thing. That fragment of their ship that you found in the human spy lab, it basically disintegrated when you got it wet. Maybe all the tech these aliens use have similar weaknesses? Only a tiny percentage of Earth is fresh water. Maybe they assumed it wouldn't be anywhere nearby. You know, of course, that there's fresh water in every house on this part of the planet. You won't be able to weaponize this alone. You need to rescue the humans, make them conscious again. You need to get them off that ship. When the aliens emerge, close the door, walk down the ramp to wreak more terror, you sneak up closer. The ramp itself withdraws back into the ship. They've left one armed guard by the entrance. You look around, searching for anything that can get you even closer. This is a really barren spot that you're in, but you see one thing that you can duck and hide behind. It's been very chilly. It's been a wintry evening. You see the remains, a half-melted snowman that someone must have made earlier in the day. So you duck behind it. You are now quite close to the ship. As soon as the main horde of aliens is out of sight... You decide you're going to have to make a move. And that's actually it. You are not in a room yet. Not in a room. Okay. There's... We're behind a snowman. Is there anything in the snowman? Like, are we talking eyes, nose? No, this one looks like it was pretty cheap. They just, like, must have poked holes in it. He's melting fast. He's dripping on your shoulders. You have to keep getting smaller and smaller to <sighs> keep covered behind him. He's all you've got. Okay. We can get fresh water from the snowman melting, maybe? Presumably he is made of fresh water. Very good. Okay, so what if we chuck a snowball at the ship? The ship is pretty massive, and you reckon if it does have that sort of weakness to it, you would have to throw about 8,000 snowballs in order to get any advantage out of that. Oh, damn. You take a look at the ship, you try to get a feel for it. It's got a single door entrance, it's built really high into it, closed, probably locked, and that metallic ramp that you saw the aliens dragging humans up, it's fully retracted. You don't see how you could even reach the important parts. Ooh. What do we see underneath the ship? It is purely blank space except for this one armed guard wearing a shiny helmet and armor holding a wicked looking weapon. Maybe it's a laser rifle, you don't know. He's close enough that you don't think you could run very far without him noticing. You couldn't sneak any closer to the ship than you are without him seeing you for sure. 
Mm, we could distract him by throwing that snowball in the other direction, maybe. But I don't know what we'd go to after that. If all alien tech is affected by it, though, then what if we chucked a snowball at his weapon? Would that disable it? Then we'd have to get into a fight with him, wouldn't we? Ooh. But his weapon wouldn't <laughs> work. Or we could just... How violent are we? <laughs> as violent as necessary. Is there anything else around us? Nothing else that will be of use. So I definitely think we have to take out the guard first in some way, shape, or form. You yeah. might have a clicky key thing that uh, activates the ramp like a garage door. Maybe. Yes. Okay. So how do we take... Do you reckon they are affected by water or is it just the tech? How, I mean, you haven't interacted with these aliens specifically themselves before. You have no way of knowing that. You want to take a risk, do we? You want to throw some snowballs? At the, Action. At the yes, we will th chuck snowballs at him, at the thing, try and cover him with snow. The snowman, barely more than slush at this point, still just firm enough that you can form a bit of a rough ball, but it is very much just dripping water. So, you try to time this right, you leap out from behind the snowman, the alien guard sees you, but just as he raises his weapon, you throw, it hits the gun and then splatters all over him, and almost immediately you hear crackling and maybe a bit of hissing. Is that steam coming from his helmet? Everything that he is holding... And wearing crumples. It's like shrinking around him. The gun is absolutely dead and his armor, he's like clawing at it. He falls over. He can't move in it. Like his arms are stuck. He doesn't <laughs> seem like the water is killing him, but he's definitely just sort of immobilized. Ah, oh, perfect. Yes. Let's approach him and examine what remains of his armor. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, you take a look. You can't really see him breathing, but who even knows if these guys breathe? It's probably okay. <laughs> his uniform has shrunk enough that it's hard to go through his pockets or anything, but you can see one thing sticking out of a back pocket that thankfully did not get wet. It looks like a remote with one button lit up. And Ooh. we've got an image for you there. Oh, Ooh. yes. Garage I'll, clicker. I'll that. Danny, can I make a request? Uh -huh. You described him having pockets and... Could you put the word space in more of these descriptions? Oh, I'm sorry. Could you, mean like, could you mean like a new, uh, another reading where you say, oh, you can barely reach into his space pockets, but you find a space remote? Yeah. His space there uniform has shrunk enough that it's hard to go through his space pockets. Thank you. That's all I need. Everyone at home is going to appreciate it. But you do pull out one thing that th thankfully didn't get earth wet. <laughs> <laughs> a space garage remote here is your oh, space you garage remote Ooh. so one okay. of you could tell the audience what you see if you are listening at home you can find a link to this image in the show notes but if you're driving don't click on the link stare at the road and listen to this description from the end making shoulder checks where appropriate make shoulder checks so use your mirrors <laughs> for everyone driving and definitely definitely not checking there is a rectangle with rounded edges, and there is a... A remote. A yes. remote, yes. <laughs> it's, not not just, it's, not, it's not just paint shapes. <laughs> totally not. It is a rectangular remote. Mm -hmm. The top left has a blinking light button. I'm going to use circular button. Top right, there is a much smaller square, which... Is that a button? Yes, these are, these all, are all buttons. All buttons. Okay, so there's a small square button. There is a pentagon button, quite small as well, in the middle left. The middle row right has a large grey circle. The bottom left has a large grey square. And the bottom right has a small grey square. Those are all the buttons. Those are all the buttons. And yes, the top left one, the large white circular one is is flashing it's lit up with a perfect visual representation of light okay there are some that are white though they're not lit up they're just they just happen specifically to be white buttons. white buttons okay press them all press them all whoa, press them all whoa, 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 whoa. okay <laughs> we, do we have any other context like because uh, what if this one's like an alarm button or something well, is there anything else on the guy that we can see not apparently anymore? not this any, is all you got any symbols on the spaceship or anything like that no not at all all right press who the knows how well you can interpret their language <laughs> anyway uh, true, true. Uh, which one are you looking at pressing well i mean the one that's blinking on seems to be the obvious choice so why not yep unless you got we'll, any uh we'll yeah. fall into your trap you press that one 
and quite simply, it turns off. Uh, dog. It's still a big circular white button, but it's no longer lit up. Press it again. It lights back up. Okay, press the other circle that's grey. That one uh, lights up. Okay. So now both of them are lit up. Okay, turn the grey one, the one I just turned off, and press the two white ones that are not lit up? At the same time? Yeah. You give that a go, you turn off the grey one, you try to press both the white ones, suddenly all of them turn off. Oh. <laughs> I feel like we're doing a puzzle. Hmm. Ooh, weird. <laughs> okay, mm. so let's try pressing the all the all three grey buttons, just one after the other. The big grey circle, big grey square, small grey square. Those three, uh, you do big grey circle, big grey square, little grey square. They, as you press each one, they light up. So now we've got those three lit up. Mm -hmm. We press one of the white small ones, let's say the pentagon. You press that one and all the lights go off. Ah. So I feel like there's an order. Is there an order? So Okay, so it goes... Oh, okay, so turn on the top corner circle that was originally lit up. Yep, great, yep. that'll light up. Turn up the grey circle. What are you thinking? Maybe you're doing an order of, like, number of sides, then size, and then number of sides, if that makes sense. So, like, circles first, but then, like, that doesn't make sense with the second circle, because they're the same size. I feel they? like it turned off after four presses, so you probably have a sequence of four before, like, either it's wrong and everything turns off, or it's right and something happens. Mm, so do the same order that you did last time, then. Press the big grey circle, mm -hmm. yep. press the big square, press the small square. And now don't press the pentagon, press the small square. Yeah. Press the small white square after yep. that. Yep. All four of these stay lit. Yeah, okay. Now do yeah. the pentagon one. It stays lit. Five of them are now lit. And now do the top, the top. right. And they all oh, turn top, off. Top. <laughs> Top left. I said top left. I meant I meant the circle. Yeah, but, I oh, know. You press but okay, they all good. turn off. No. Okay. <laughs> um. Well, we got to six, but no, we didn't. We got to five, and then the last one. Oh was wait, wrong. no, we pressed oh. one, you two, three, You managed to three, press four, six, five, and then six. We Can we press, press the top six. left? This that run could turn that back on again. Uh huh. And then do the same order we did before. Cool. All right. What is this order? So large circle gray, large square gray, small square gray. Small so a small square white and then the pentagon. Cool, but having started with the white having circle, started with the white circles, that was already yeah. This time they all light up one by one, and when they are all lit, the ship rumbles and the ramp is deployed. What was this pattern that you just found? <laughs> That's, That's a good question. That's what I yeah. to know. Okay, wait. Okay, so the last one was the circle, the second one was the circle. So it looks like what we're doing is ah uh, mm, no hold on. I, I mean it's something. <laughs> I feel like we are going up in Wait, the number so the, of sides. Wait, so the top left was the first one, was it? Mm -hmm. Yes. Oh, yeah, okay. So that was the first one. That was already on because to start Because that with. was already blinking. Good. Mm. Um, so that was white circle, yeah, white circle, dark circle, then... Square. square big square, square. Big square. Small square. Oh, I think I know what it is. It's a link, isn't it? Because this one links oh. to this one because they're both like yep. big circles. No, without that. Yeah, no, so you're alternating one, one factor one, each time, also, right? Yes. You're alternating one factor. So, yeah, yeah exactly. it's going. And then that one is just the same size, but then different shape. Yes, it was interesting knowing the solution, hearing you des describe it, because you very specifically said we have large white circle, small <laughs> white square, small white pentagram, mm. large grey circle. There are clearly there are three elements. Yeah. And, uh, and a pentagon. And so, pentagon. yes, there's Not always pentagon, two that yeah. are similar, and there's only a specific pattern. Two large circles, then large and grey, then grey and square, then square and small, then small and white. Makes sense. Like me. Yep. Which yeah. means, in theory, you could have also gone backwards. You could have started with the pentagon and worked the other way. Oh, yes. That would have been allowable. But, yes, when you had uh, reset and then started from the grey square, once you got to the small white pentagon, you couldn't go to the large white circle because there's yeah. not two things mm. in common. But you've done it. You stumbled onto the answer before you <laughs> understood it, but that's fine. The ramp is now deployed. You walk up it. There's no alien guards to stop you. You come face to face with the big metal door. You look at its lock. It's complicated. It's built into the door. It's a kind you've never seen before. Uh-oh. Did you take out the guard and solve this remote puzzle for nothing? 
Can we go grab more snow and chuck it on the lock? <laughs> there is a little bit more snow left in the remaining dying puddle of snowman. And, you know, why not? It worked once before. You scoop up what's left of snowman's head, you just splash it on the lock, and immediately it hisses, it cracks, and then it crunches. The lock sort of implodes. It leaves a fist-sized hole in the door. You reach through, and you feel a button. You press it, door slides open and lets you in. <laughs> Winning. Woo. You don't need to solve that puzzle. <laughs> <laughs> now, the first thing you notice as you walk in, the water on your hand from the snow dries up instantaneously. The mother of all dehumidifiers must be working through the air in here. So mm. that old snow trick must be able to be put to bed now. It's not going to wow. work again. In other news, you look around to see what else is going in here. The door slides shut again behind you. To your left is an enormous barred cage, and it's full of all the unconscious humans. All right, so now as for why they're unconscious, you'll grant Ah, there. Right at the back, there is a suspicious black orb, and you can feel it radiating very strange energy, making your cage. head feel fuzzy. Unfortunately, it is encased in a sturdy glass box. Classic. Bank heist going on here. All right. <laughs> in the very center of the room, there is a table with something you've seen on your people's larger ships. There is a holographic map. Hmm. And off to the right, you see a buzzing power box, as well as a different, very unfamiliar machine. You do not know what the other one is. Can we examine the power box? This power box is humming. That's kind of what gave it away, that it might have been a power source. You take a look. It's made up of six small compartments that have little glowing shapes inside them. Batteries of some type, you suppose? We have an image of that for you as well. Uh, yes, again, for people listening along at home, there is a link to this picture in the show notes. Uh, Aaron, would you like to describe this for the people who are, uh, yeah, can't sure. see it? So there are basically six sections. Uh, they all have look like, looks like an eject button above them, interestingly enough. Look like an eject button. Um, and they also, so okay, so the first one in the first column is basically two red dots. Just below that is one red square. In the next column, there is one blue dot, and below that is two blue squares. And in the next column, the final column, is two yellow dots, and below that is three yellow squares. And mm -hmm. then there's a number to, off to the, um, to the right, 88 out of 84. You are very relieved that these aliens use Earth numbers, which you are It's very wanted. convenient. Mm. Mm. Very good. But it is actually space 88 out of space 84. Damn. Oh, sorry. And these look like <laughs> space dice at the space top. Space dice with space eject symbols mm -hmm. in some kind of space matrix. Of course. Of course. <laughs> okay. So I want to press the eject on the top middle one with a single blue dot. You press eject on that compartment and sure enough, it opens up and the little circle in that section spills out and falls into your hand. Oh. You could easily put it back in if you wanted. There is plenty of room in there. And you take a look at the numbers on the side. It does not read 88 out of 84 anymore. It says 85 out of 84. Ah, cool. Okay. okay. So one blue circle might be worth three. Okay. Okay. So we should probably eject the up two blue squares next. I don't have paper with me, so I've got to do uh, space maths in my head. You're currently... In your what, what type of head? Earth head. Thank you. Okay, so we're currently at 85. You eject the two blue squares, and you are now at 69. Oh, now I need to do space math too, in my space head. Um... <laughs> That's 16, so they're eight each. Okay. And then eject the red square? Should, should we put them back? We'll it put doesn't them matter. Back. <laughs> it's all good. All right, so you were at 69. You eject the single red square. It goes down to 58. Okay. So 11 for a... Was that the two? Red. For a red square, yep. Okay, yep. And then we'll eject the two red dots next. The two red circles come out, and you are now at... Got to remember where you were. You were at 58, right? Mm -hmm. You are now at 48. So five each. Mm -hmm. And then um, the two yellow dots. You take out the two yellow circles and you are now at 36. Six. Well, we are at 36. <laughs> Great. And we will eject the... Oh, that's the final three, isn't it? We've ejected everything else. So inject those so and we should go down 12. to zero, it right? It goes down to zero. So 36, yeah, 12 each. So. So, you now, so you have used that to get values 
for each of those. Do you want to go do a rundown of what each of those symbols is worth? Okay, so the blue dot is worth three. Mm -hmm. The blue square is worth eight. Yep. The red square is worth 11. The red circle is worth five, mm -hmm. if I read my own writing. Uh, the yellow circle is worth six. The yellow square is worth 12. Nice. Do we have to put them all back into the same one? Like if I if I took out the three yellow squares, do I have to put the whole three yellow squares back? So you do not have to put all three yellow squares back. There's an appropriate amount of room, but no, you put one back in, it'll go up by 12. Oh, uh, yep, cool, cool, cool. Mixing and matching the compartments by like swapping colours and things doesn't seem to have any effect. Okay. okay. So we've got to get to 84 because yeah. it's 88 Don't out of 84. Math. Don't math. So I would suggest starting from all of them is 88 rather than trying to build up from zero. <laughs> put them all back in. Yeah. I'd put them put all, back, them all in. back in. All right, we're back at 88. Okay, good, good. Okay, okay. so what do we need so to take? So we'll we need put to take them in four. and then minus. Um, Interesting. So well, we need to have four less, basically. Yeah. Is the answer. So This how is do interesting because, I mean, less? there's nothing worth four, nothing worth less than four except for three. We don't have a one. Well, which ones have a difference of four? Eight and 12 have a difference of four. But you can't take out the twelve. Well, we've got. Uh, the problem is all of them in is eighty-eight. How do we get down to eighty-four? I think we are going to look around the room to see if we find anything else that looks like <laughs> these squares or circles. Yeah, it seems like it was difficult to just do minus four with these numbers. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> we need a green something. Okay. What so, green is. what is the weird thing that we do not know what it is? Ah, uh, the other mysterious device. Yes. You take a look at this machine. It is a conveyor belt that carries whatever is normally on it into a boxy sort of section, which has wires and other gizmos on the outside, and then that conveyor comes out the other side. It seems to be on, it seems to be functional, but there is nothing being conveyed along it. Hmm. What if we take out one of the weird shapes and yes. put it on the conveyor belt? Can we let's, try let's that? Let's put take out a yellow thingamy, yellow, yellow square, square, and put it on the conveyor belt. All right, you stick a yellow square on the conveyor belt at the start of it. It starts moving. It goes into the box part where it pauses. The machine hums for a while. Then the yellow square comes speeding out the other end. Not alone. A second yellow square shoots out with it. Oh, it's a duplicator. Yay, we have a duplicator. I find it funny. <laughs> In the playtest, you also called it a duplicator. It's a duplicator. In all of my notes, I've called it a cloner. Oh, it's a cloner. What is wrong with you? It's a duplicator. Sorry, space cloner. Look, if you had said it's a replicator, I'd be like, sure, I get that. Oh, I, I understand. I can be on board with it. A cloner? You <laughs> sicken me. I use many syllable, no syll do. <laughs> space okay. cloner, I can accept. I think we just put the two yellow squares that came out back into the power machine and take one of the blue squares out. All right. What was a blue square again? It was worth eight. Okay. Oh, yeah. Wait, did I go the wrong way? Yeah, I, I think you've now made it 92 <laughs> out of 84. Yeah, I think we need to go. I got the wrong way. We need to duplicate the blue square. Yeah. Clone, a, I can clone duplicate, replicate a blue one. All right, you hope this thing doesn't run out of power. You put a blue square on there, replicate that. It all seems like it goes well. Nice. All right, okay. so let's take all the yellow ones out, put the blue one back in, and two of the yellows? Uh, we put two of the yellows. Yeah. yeah. Does that maths work out? Yeah, you, My remove, brain's off. you reduce it by 12 by taking out a yellow. You add a new blue going up by eight. That brings you to 84. Fantastic. Out of 84. Good work. Oh! <laughs> You've ejected what needed ejecting. You've cloned what needed cloning, inserted what needed inserting. And you finally get that meter to exactly 84. The number turns green. Ooh. Success. You have done something good to the power. <laughs> you don't know what yet. <laughs> That's reassuring. Let's go look at the map. Oh, yeah. Let's, let's go look at the map. That's the other reason. Yep. You turn immediately. You go look at the map. And just as you are going to walk over to it, you notice it's actually really bright and a little bit hard to look at. But as you walk towards it, it seems to be stabilising. And going back down, and you can actually see what's on it. And you reckon if there was too much power in that power machine, that would have been very difficult to see what was going on on there. Uh. Uh, I mean, look, it's a holographic globe, really, more than a map. It looks like it's Earth. You take a look. It's the entirety of Earth. It's got lines showing country borders. It's even got country names written in big letters in, conveniently enough, English. 
Ooh. Five of the countries are glowing with different coloured lights. You see, you just start as north as possible and look down. There's a Kazakhstan up there, which is sort of highlight in a brownish colour. Iran next is pink. Bit of a spin around to Antigua and Barbuda, which is orange. We will give you the appropriate amount of time it takes to write the name Antigua and Barbuda. And mm -hmm. finally, Madagascar, which is a nice little lilac colour. Weirdly, you also notice every single country that you can see has its name label. And next to the name, a teeny tiny image of what looks like a pair of lips. I see you've both taken the coward's way out and <laughs> written the word lips as opposed to drawing a little set of well, lips I like I have started in my notes. drawing over around the lips, but then I couldn't do the middle. So. My lips don't look like lips. If you look at my lips on my notes, you will see why I don't draw the lips. <laughs> uh, do we know why uh, in the, these countries have all been marked with a peanut in a tray? You know what that looks like to me? That looks exactly like in the last mini arc, the Willy Wonka room, when I tried to draw a cucumber slice with a bit of smoked salmon on top of it. <laughs> that is exactly what that, that looks like. Actually. This is cucumber with smoked salmon. That's what's next to each of these. If we, like, touch one of these coloured ones, does anything happen? Like, if we put our finger through it? Doesn't seem to. It looks like the only function that is currently on with this map is being able to just, like, rotate it to see better. Okay. It doesn't seem like there's anything actually going on with it. All right. Do you want to have a look what else is in the room? Yes. Yeah, I think we need to... Can we sort of gaze through that cage at the unconscious humans, see mm -hmm. what's over there? Very much so. So you could look at the cage itself at some point, but the bars are easy enough to look through, much too narrow to reach through, though. You look at the humans, dozens of them in there, all piled up, all unconscious, not even slightly stirring. You take a look, see if you can spot Matt in there. Oh, yeah, right off towards the corner. It's just as out as everyone else. Matt, we found you! <laughs> All right, let's have a look at the door itself. The cage? The cage, yeah, the cage. This cage, bars are very strong, very sturdy. It's locked with a built-in lock, which wants a three-part combination. Oh, and, oh, thank God, this was easy. Just like the power box, it, these are normal earth digits that you are very familiar with. It's just a three-digit combination lock. A nice coincidence. Mm -hmm. Maybe this ship has like, been built specifically to host humans sometimes? I don't know, but either way... This you can work with. Do we also want to have a look at this big thing glass is... cage thing? Yes. Yeah. With the ball of black unconsciousness in it. <laughs> <laughs> so the glass cube, it's large enough to completely encase the incapacitator, which is about the size of a bowling ball. Mm -hmm. The cube is also fixed to the floor, so you can't lift it. It does have a bottom, but the bottom is attached to the floor. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You get the impression that this is not ordinary glass that you could just kick and have it shatter. You examine it closely. On its base, under the incapacitator, there is a symbol etched on it, and it looks like a human letter A. It's like a big old capital A. Mm -hmm. You also notice as you move around and get the light on each side of the cube a little bit differently... Each one has a faint tinge of colour to it. Ooh. Like, the very top has a tinge of green to it. And the four sides, slight tinge of pink on one, orange on the other, brown on another, and lilac on the final one. This may have something to do with the... Yeah, because the A would be the Antigua and Barbuda. Maybe. Um, how many countries do we have? One, two, three, four, five. So that's the five sides. The A's on yep. the bottom. Then there's the five sides that are colored, right? Is the location of these countries even remotely, like, related to this cube? Is it one of those countries, like, in the top of the top sort of area and then the other one's on this side if you look at the globe? Is you that... wouldn't say that specifically. No? Okay. No. What if you lean in and kiss the cube? <laughs> You lean in. I mean, these the cube is solid, so you can very much kiss it. Uh, do you have a favorite side? The orange one. You lean in. You kiss the orange one. You feel it sort of hum a little bit under you. But then that's it. Nothing seems to happen. Okay. Very hummy, these spaceships. Um. Okay. At first I thought you could do something like spell out kiss, but then I'm... Because I'm like, K-I, but there is no S. Very oh, man. <laughs> 
I guess I'm just struggling to figure out why the aliens would care about the first letter of each country as well. Or the, the names of the countries. Look, Are they actually significant? They must be I am just guessing because there is an A on... Yeah. Oh, actually, there. yeah. Maybe it's because... maybe that What was the A exactly again? It's just on the bottom face of the cube. Oh, the bottom face of the cube. Mm. It's not on a particular pane of glass. It is on yep. the bottom. Okay. And the only thing we have to we look like we can open is probably this this thing with the three digits. Three digits. But is there anything else on the floor or around the room? There is one other thing that ah. it is worth looking at. Uh huh. That sounds. Is well, there anything uh, on the around the the map, but not the map itself? Like, is that pedestal it's on has something on? No, there? that's not particularly exciting. No, is there okay. anything on the ceiling? Not the ceiling. The floor. Not the floor. Mm. Sorry, Bill the is walls. making noise. <clears throat> so. Uh, we're going to pause for a moment while he does that, or we're not. We're just going to commentate on it. He's rustling around our belongings in the other side of the room, being very mysterious about it, being very covert. He's put down his notebook. He's put down his headphones. What's he doing? I do know what he's doing. I'm just building the suspense because no one else knows. <gasps> he's hiding from us now. Ooh. Big secret. Big secret. I'm waiting for the big reveal. Turn around. Taking a little longer than you want. I'm wearing this. It's a pin. It's a pin. Bill is now wearing it's a pin. It's a beautiful branded pin. Oh, oh I think we should the check, the check the door. <laughs> you think we would know, wouldn't you? You'd think. Which of, door? Is there another door? We, the one we came in. Just oh, the, the door we came you through. You would think that we would know this. For like, our $10 donors, if you'd like to get a... Uh, always Wait, check the no, door. Our ten dollar donors It'll, should already uh, have them. Well, yes. Anyone who's not a ten dollar like donor, it, always you check can the get door this badge. Amongst other badges, then highly recommend. It'll save you in a pinch. <laughs> I feel so ashamed now, given we literally designed stuff around this. So, okay, <sighs> let's examine the door that we yes. came through. You whirl back around to that sliding door that you came through. You ignore the melted spot that used to be a lock. And you focus elsewhere. You take a look at the hinges and things like that. And, ooh, right on the other side, uh, the door, right next to the door, right on the wall next to it, so it would have been covered up if the door had stayed open, but luckily it slid shut behind you, there is a little, very narrow electrical panel. Maybe like a tiny fuse box. Doesn't look like it actually opens, though. It looks like what you see is all that there is. A wire runs from it along the floor, very narrow, goes around and connects to the back of the big cage. You take a look at this panel that you've got here. It is made up of a screen with a bunch of symbols going on that you don't recognize and a single dial at the bottom of it that has two settings labeled with pictures. One of them looks like a silhouette of an alien. One looks like a silhouette of a human. It is currently pointed at the alien picture. Oh. Well, should we just turn the dial? Yeah. You turn the dial to the human setting, you guess, and those weird symbols that you didn't recognize, they vanish. And they've been replaced by human letters. Okay, great. I guess they've translated. That's nice. But you take a look at it, and you aren't sure if this is a glitch, maybe because you damaged the door a little bit, uh, maybe there was some splashback. Maybe these aliens don't know quite as much about how human languages work as you do. Maybe they're only good with numbers and not words. But they got all those countries right. This must be a glitch. You are not sure how they translated this. So let's take a look at their translation into human letters. For people at home, you can see this in the show notes, as, as helpful as it is. Leanne, would you like to try and describe what you're looking at for the listeners? Look, there are three lines. Each of them is a string of letters. Please do not make me read out every <laughs> single letter. <laughs> yeah, some of them are quite long, especially that last one. Yes. So they all seem to be random. They don't seem to make words, but it's a mix of like Fs, Vs, R, I, U, N, E, R, etc. etc. Et you get the idea. So yeah, something scrambled up in translation here. Something mm. scrambled up bad. Hmm. Mm. Right. So we have a string of letters. We have an A on the bottom of this cube with the different colors around it. We have a bunch of countries. We need a three-digit combination. There's a power cord that goes around to the back of the... Is it where? Can we observe where that power cord is going? It looks like it is sort of going into the cage itself. It looks like okay. it is. What happens if we just rip the cable out? <laughs> oh, no. You might break the cage in a way that you do not want. Oh. You are okay. concerned about risking that. Like, none of the letters that I see immediately link me to 
either the colours or the countries. Yeah, no. Because they don't quite, like, I wouldn't be able to say you can use them to, can you use them to make the letters, like? How many letters are in What if you're crossing then? out the letters that are in the countries? The first letter of each or something? No, not the first letter, it's like everything. Well, any letter in the country. And what's left. But then I'm like, you're left with some really weird letters. <laughs> Definitely left with a J and a Q at least, which yes. might be a problem. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, you could make the word five from the top line. <laughs> now, can you? How do you do that? Oh, no, okay, as in yeah. I am literally just going, there's an F, there's an I, there's a V, there's yeah, a E. Yeah, you can also make a three with the second one, by the way, <laughs> with letters. And this is, this might be brute force the hell out Wait, of this. But... Which letters can you... <laughs> T H R E E. Oh yeah, I mean, can you describe it? Like for, can you describe for listeners at home? When oh, you, so when, like when you are doing that, when Tell you me. sort of scan over the top line from like uh, left to right, you sort of see vaguely there's a few Fs there, then an I, then a V, then an E. Like it, in throughout the mess, there looks like there's a five in there somewhere, and in throughout the mess of the second line, looks like there's a three in there. But this is definitely wild and, guessing. And if we like guess it. this and we get it right, then we're going to have to explain how we got there <laughs> with the actual puzzle, which may be a problem. And I feel like the last one might be eight. Oh, uh, maybe not. Yeah, E I G H T. Yeah. Yeah, I feel, like, I feel like the combination might be five, three, eight. But how do we get there? That's a very, very, very good question. Maybe the aliens are just elongate or they put gibberish in between their numbers. <laughs> this puzzle, this one was all, always planned as a, you can just sort of see stuff there, can't you? But there now wait, is how does this make sense? But I, di- I did this the same way. I went, <laughs> wait a minute. If I sort of unfocus my eyes a little, but there is actually a, there is actually a yeah. more to it. But, oh, you, okay. but that is, this is sort of the step and, in. Mm, this is like a mul- th- this room oh. is like a multiple choice maths exam. You might guess the right answer, but the teacher can always question you about it afterwards to make yeah. sure. Is it the like the large number of like so? There's like four Fs. Is there four Fs? One, two, three, four, four Fs, and there's One, four two, I's, three, four and there's I's. four. No, it's no, one B. Only... Yeah. No, no, there's, there's two, two B's. There's two B's. Yeah, it's not quite. I mean, look, five, three, eight is a. Very viable solution to go and try. We're just having some puzzle fun here. Oh, yeah. Oh, I don't want to move on without working out God, why. No. <laughs> I refuse, damn it. Hmm. So to for anyone listening, there's the second line basically is two Ts, one D, a H, R, 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 O, E, E, I, I, E. Hmm. Which we kind of saw a three in, but now we just like... How do you pick which ones? And the more you stare at it, the more it disappears. Uh, so there is one D, H, and O. There are two T's, there are two I's, and there are three R's and three E's. I'm looking at the helps. positioning. I'm trying to see mm. if there's something to do with the positioning of it. Take like, every second one. I yeah, tried that one. Uh, I tried that. It didn't work. And then mm. that definitely would not work with the five or the eight. Yeah, true. Now, why every second one? Why would that be a thing? Just because that's sometimes a thing. Literally, because that's just sometimes a thing. Hmm. I feel like each of the lines starts with the letter that the number, like, that the number we are guessing it is, starts Hmm. with. I feel like you would at least start on the first letter. Yes. That seems fair. So. Maybe you go every third letter. Third letter. Third letter. It's It's a third letter, yeah. Or, and then the T- five one is every T- fifth H- letter, isn't it? Uh, one, two, three, four, five. E- e- yeah, one, two, that's three, it. V, mm. one, two, three, four. And then e- the eight is, yeah. and that's why the eight is so long and the five is longer than the e- three. Now, we, just for fun. Just oh, I think we should save this. We what? Get, for what? But how do for we the get post show. Oh, okay, fine. <laughs> we'll save stuff for the post show, whatever. <laughs> Sorry, everyone, you actually have to listen to that one, I guess. Um, but no, look, that works. The, every third, every fifth letter of the first line. Spells out five. Every third letter of the second line spells out three, and every eighth letter of the final line spells out eight. Uh, Yeah. I mean, I guess the question is why is that relevant? Like maybe that's for the after show. But anyway, Mm. all right. Uh, And yes, there is there is another element to this puzzle, but we're not going to waste any more time on it now. You can, if you want to find that out, everybody, listen to next week's episode. (laughs) No, it's not. I think Bill is just trying to get more listeners onto the post shows. Yeah. No, I think it's just a bit of fun. I just want them to stew a little bit. 
but right. so you All right, where let's are try we it. now? Um, let's put it into five, three, the eight. three digit combo lock in that built in lock in the cage. You put that into the door, and hey, good thing you managed to read through the alien's shoddy translation because the lock comes off. You swing open the cage door. And sadly, there is no one conscious to celebrate with you. Oh. You just got a whole lot of sleeping humans. Can we kick them gently? Absolutely. They wake up? It makes you feel a little bit better and then a little bit worse. Oh. Well, I wouldn't kick Matt. We love Matt here. Yeah, just oh. kick the ugly ones. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so they're unconscious. Where did they... So that wire led around the back mm-hmm. I don't know can we examine the humans anything on them like what, what else is in this room oh quite possibly you could loot them dry if you wanted oh, to but could. most of them just sort of ran out of the house in a panic you might not find too much are any of them billionaires I mean do billionaires carry oh, yeah one of them has his pockets stuffed full of twitter stock <laughs> okay I kick him multiple <laughs> times hard <clears throat> so, yeah no you are not sure at the stage what you have gained by this except for the humans are one step closer to escape, just probably not the more important one. <laughs> Is there anything on the cage door? <laughs> no, it seems like you have deactivated that cage door exactly the way you were supposed to. Nothing at the back of the cage where that wire links no, in the so the cage is now open. Yep. Okay. And nothing happens if we yank the wire out now, I assume. No, it doesn't. Now it is totally acceptable to do that, and you break that cage. Yes. And the, right. the rest of that puzzle dies away forever, and now nobody gets to hear the other part of it. Ah, oh. oh, no. <laughs> Sorry, guys. <laughs> but no, the orb still hums menacingly in the back of the room. Okay, do, can we go back to the alien translate thing? Because now we might be able to, I don't know, this might be a stretch, but maybe we can turn it back to alien and then translate some of those weird symbols, or is that not... I'm sorry, you broke it. I, oh, yeah, wait, you yeah, it. Yeah, it if only. Uh, so the fact just, that you whoops. are now allowed to break it shows that no, it probably wasn't going to help. Done. That's fair. <laughs> okay, so we have an open cage. We have a bunch of sleeping humans. We've and... got the cube with the slightly coloured sides. We've got the world with the countries that are slightly coloured. <laughs> we didn't gain any and extra lips. information. No, we didn't get You any. didn't. Extra info. Mean... Seems like they were two separate puzzles. Oh my god. All right. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Oh. Multi linear. Oh. All right. Okay. So, how do we get from a series of countries and the colors on the cube? We don't even know what the cube does. What if. Okay. I'm going to go around kissing every single side of the cube. Cool. You sort of go around, you kiss the sides, and you finish it off by kissing it on top. Each time, as you get towards it, you sort of do feel like the hum of, uh, like, it, it, the cage itself mm-hmm. is buzzing with its own power, not just the incapacitator inside it, but nothing seems to happen. It doesn't react to what you've done. Is the bottom any kind of colour or no? No. All it has is this A. Hmm. Well, look, if the others are colours, no, I'm just like, is there a colour starting with A? I don't think so. I'm sure there is. I'm going to be corrected immediately the moment I say I do. Azure. So. <laughs> yes. Azure, yes. What can an A mean? Hmm. So do the countries have any, they just, they have the words or is it, no, they colored that color, right? On the, the, on the map. On the on map. They had that color, but their names were also fully written out. Okay. Yeah. And there were lips next yes. to each of the names. Which one do we want to kiss first? Maybe that's the issue. Like, um, mm. It could be. We've got an A at the bottom. So if we start with Antigua. So we start with maybe orange. the orange one. But you did kiss the orange one last time first, well, didn't you? Well, what if we kiss orange first? And, and then, then we kiss green. Because that's a C, yeah. Yeah. And then what's what's the alphabet? What's the <laughs> alphabet? A, B, C, D, F, G, G, I. Um, so then we kiss pink. To save you a bit, you try going through alphabetically, and again, like, it does seem like it's reacting to the kissing, but it didn't like that kissing. Didn't like that Mm. kissing. Alphabetical kissing. Alphabetical kissing's not not right. Not quite right. The A must be important, somehow. Oh, yes. How do you kiss in an A shape? (laughs) (laughs) Oh, no. I don't like being in this room anymore. (laughs) What's happening? (laughs) Okay. I was just, right now I'm counting the number of letters in each country, but well, I'm like... I mean, Antigua you... and Proposal. Definitely right? a lot. So let's see yeah. if, we, if we... Yeah. I believe there are a couple of countries that have the same number of letters in that list. Okay. Not a long list, but I think some of them have the same number of letters. Mm-hmm. But again, not yeah. a bad thought. Yeah, absolutely. Oh. <sighs> Interesting. Brown, pink. 
So we have to kiss this in a certain order, I reckon. But mm. which is the order? Are we going to go? You say colors are rainbow, like if there's no. like a color spectrum sort of thing. But that's what brown. Ah, <laughs> uh, <laughs> we well, I mean, crap, on our planet, A's. rainbows are brown <laughs> and lilac and oh, orange. Mark Watson rainbow. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I mean, to be fair, you don't even know if, like, to these aliens, it is necessarily, like, they like A because A starts a word or something that they like. Like, all it might just be, yeah, that's just a symbol. They really like C, and it's just a good one. They like that. Okay. They like it's how that one looks. Shit. Who knows? It's a pointy symbol. In their language, it means hope. Uh... <laughs> how many A's are in each? Oh, wait. Oh, oh, there's wait. so many in Madagascar, it's not funny. Yeah. <laughs> well done. There's four. There's four in Madagascar. Uh, there's dear. two in Cambodia. How do you spell Antiqua? One in Iran. And bar, that must be one, the last two, one. Barbie. So kiss the pink one first. Ooh, so we start with, so we're going to kiss the pink. Iran. Because the pink is Iran's, which yeah. has one A in it. Yes. Correct. That is why. That is the logic. There is one A in Iran. How many times do you reckon it would be fun to kiss that one? Once. That makes sense. That's fair. Yeah. Maybe we kiss the second one twice. Yeah. Or is it, is it an or, order or is it a count? It could be an... I'm going with order. I just going have it order? as an order, but you can throw in just lots of kisses to make mm. it feel better. So then we lavish number the green slot side, which is Cambodia, which is two A's. With two kisses. And then brown, Kazakhstan, which is three A's if I spelt it right. <laughs> um, mm -hmm. Four, Madagascar, lilac, the lilac side. And finally the orange side, which is Antigua and Barbuda. Because we can't forget that the word and has an A in it. Yes. Get us to five A's. <laughs> a little weird. You feel a little weird about this. We can't deny that. But you go around, you press your lips to each side you know passionately just in case it counts <laughs> and once you've reached the final one now you finish off with the orange side all of the colors completely fade away all of the sides turn perfectly clear and then they begin to retract into the base the device keeping all the humans unconscious is now within your grasp it is sitting right there looks too solid to just pick it up and smash it. But you touch it, it's warm to the touch. It's exuding a lot of energy coming from the inside. You feel it around, trying to get a look at anything, any features on it, and... Ooh, hang on. What's going on down here? You flip it over, and on either side of the bottom, you have found two small round holes. That makes sense. They're exhaust ports. Something generating this much heat needs some way to release it all. If you have something to block these exhaust ports, the whole thing will overheat and it'll shut down. You think. Okay, in your experience, metal will usually do the trick for this. You need something metal, maybe copper or nickel, something like that. Do these happen to be the same shape and size as those circles we had in that weird fuse box? No, they are no. drastically different. These ones are much smaller. Do we have mini torpedoes to fire into the they exhaust port? They would be incredibly mini <laughs> torpedoes, but you'd be lying if you said your head didn't go there. Oh, in episode uh, one, you did meet a mouse with a submarine. <laughs> no, that didn't happen. <laughs> so okay. Le Leanne is making the appropriate Star Wars reference that I intended, yeah. and you just took it to I'll mouse submarines. I've tried to find some, yeah, that, like real life. I don't deal with nerd stuff like Star Wars. I live in the real world where mice have submarines. <laughs> Says the guy who brought up the Superman reference just then. <laughs> no, that's just a symbol that means hope. I don't know what you're talking about. That's written on the side of the mouse submarine. Ah, uh, of course, of course. Makes perfect sense. All right. Okay. Exhaust ports. Uh, yeah, you need, need two metal. small metal circles. <laughs> what else do we have with us? Do any of the humans the have wire? earrings? What's inside the wire that we like literally ripped out from the... Yeah, nothing that feels appropriate for this. You need like a solid metal circle, maybe like this big or so. I'm making. Oh, Danny, what would you making say? With her 20, 20 cent piece, coin? maybe. Yeah. I would maybe call 50. it that. Yeah, that makes sense to all of you non Australians, right? Can like we, a quarter. Can we, like uh, a quarter. I don't know how big a quarter oh, is. Oh, you're looking for that. like a quarter or something. Let's let's go loot the <laughs> unconscious humans for some coins. You go back in the cage, and why not? You start rummaging through as many pockets as you can. Um, you have a bit of trouble. 
a lot of the humans don't have wallets on them. The aliens kind of caught them off guard in the middle of the night. They didn't plan for this. And a lot of the ones that you do find wallets on have no cash because uh, ah, humans cash these days. And then you come across Matt's body. Come on, good old dependable Matt. He doesn't carry a wallet. But loose in his pocket, you do find a single coin. Woohoo! Let's duplicate it with the duplicator replicator. Woo! Yes, the, col- the cloner. The cloner. The cloner. Let's clone it. The space it doubler. Into the Earth Things cloner. <laughs> it goes through. You now have two coins Woo! of identical Woo! size. Can we put the two back in again at the same time and now get four coins? Just keep going. You keep hold going. on. There's a system that you can work with here. Okay. You have two coins. I have two coins. And the machine explodes. <laughs> <laughs> no! Ah. If we put the two coins by a mouse torpedo. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. Did you need that one still? Yeah, have my hope. <laughs> hope you have a better luck next time. It's a new hope, damn it. Uh, oh, dear. Oh, All good. right, so. <laughs> Let's put the hope into the exhaust. Yeah. All right. You put the two little hopes into the exhaust ports. They fit perfectly. They're a perfect fit. And then you just put it down, you stand back, and you wait. And the thing, it's black, but eventually you start to see a sort of inner glow forming. It starts to turn red. And you take another step back. You are afraid of what's going on. And then after a few more moments, this device, as fragile as it is powerful... It just shatters. No warning. It just goes bang into a million fragments all over the place. That reddish light inside it, it vanishes. And then next minute, you see writhing coming from your left. Oh, it's a pile of humans finding out where they are. Some of them scream. They were knocked out before they'd even noticed an alien invasion was happening. Oh no, some of them are seeing you for the first time. You are the alien. They are on an alien ship. They think it was you. Oh dear. But... If any of them were thinking of charging you, the appearance of Matt from the back of the crowd stops them. He is tall. He is radiant. He is in his element right now. Have I mentioned to you two that it was discovered early on that Matt was a significant end of the world prepper? He is very happy about this. (laughs) (laughs) He takes charge of these humans. He organizes them into lines. He stops any of them from running. He tells them the best way to sneak into the night without being spotted. You go over and you quietly inform him of the device that knocked them out and of the alien's weakness to fresh water. His eyes light up. Could they really have gotten so lucky that these are signs aliens? (laughs) But then another human overhears you and pipes up and goes... Uh, no, it's no use. Right before these things showed up, all the water in the neighborhood was suddenly cut. I guess they didn't want to take any chances. This should be devastating. And yet, Matt's expression, if anything, gets more gleeful. Hmm. He dusts his hands together. Everybody, back to my place. Nobody ever listened to me. But I always knew a mass water shortage was inevitable. <laughs> I really thought he was just excited to pee on some aliens. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sure that water's fresh enough. <laughs> Matt has enough water bottles in his doomsday basement to arm everybody in town twice over. Not only that, he has purifying tablets so people can draw their own water out of other liquids. He's... Yeah. Wink. <laughs> He's also played enough video games that his military strategy is unparalleled. <laughs> And under his command, the humans and you alongside them drive off an entire alien invasion by just after sunrise. When it's over, look, shock settles over Matt, like it isn't until now he realises how much time he's just spent outside and dealing with people. You've gotten the impression from your time with him this was not something he'd had in quite a while. It's part of why he was so comfortable hanging out with a total outsider like you. You assume you'll get a chance to talk, but before you know it, a cheering crowd has enveloped him, carrying him off, saving the world, celebrations all in order. They don't give you a second glance. Didn't take them long to realise you weren't like the other aliens, and now they're not even surprised by you. You've been completely forgotten. You know what? Maybe that's for the best. 
So alone in the morning light, you track down your pod. You get to work repairing it. And by dusk, it's ready to fly. You dawdle for a while. Nobody comes by. And well, there's no wind, no cloud, no aircrafts. Conditions are perfect. You might not get such a good chance again. So, you go. Predictably, it'll be a long time before you're allowed back around Earth again. With the discovery of this new alien species, all travel is restricted to professionals way more senior than you. For the next couple of years, all you can do is beg those lucky few for any tidbits of news about the humans and all they've been up to, and you rarely get a good response. Except for one day. Today, let's say. The senior travel officer of the most recent trip is an old friend of your mother's, and they specifically seek you out gift in hand, wrapped like in that Earth custom. You open it eagerly, and you see that it's a book. Author on the back photograph looks very, very familiar. And you read the title. The title of this book is Earth Terror Evaded Together, Eternally Thankful. E.T., E.T., E.T. <laughs> <laughs> and that is the end of the arc. <laughs> <laughs> Very nice. <laughs>